In this video, I'm going to talk about what happens at the neuromuscular junction, and it's really a continuation from the action potential video and the nerve structure video. So if you remember, when the action potential um, happens, it propagates down the motor neuron here via saltatory conduction over the nodes of Ronvier, and it ends here at the motor end bulb, which then uh, depolarizes your sarcolemma. So in this video, I'm just going to explain what happens here. So first of all, I'll draw the motor end bulb, like so, and your skeletal muscle, which it depolarizes. So this is your sarcolemma of your skeletal muscle. And there's a few things that you, you have to label, uh, first of all. First of all, you have your voltage-gated calcium channels, like so. And then on your sarcolemma, you have your sodium channels. Now these are ligand operated, and these are known as your nicotinic sodium channels. So these are your sodium, sodium ligand operated nicotinic receptors. Now, at rest, you have a higher concentration of calcium and sodium on the outside. So that's important to note as well. Within your motor end bulb, you also have these vesicles. And these vesicles, they contain a neurotransmitter. And the neurotransmitter for skeletal contraction is acetylcholine. So these vesicles contain the acetylcholine. So if we remember from the previous video, the resting membrane potential of the neuron, and it's, the, it's true also in the sarcolemma, is largely negative, usually around minus 70 millivolts. When you have propagation of the action potential, the resting membrane protect, potential becomes more positive. So as the action potential comes down, this becomes more positive, usually around plus 30 millivolts. As the, action, as the action potential reaches the voltage-gated calcium channels, you, these open and you get an influx of calcium into the motor end bulb. This high concentration of calcium affects the vesicles and it causes the vesicles to migrate to the presynaptic membrane and allows them to fuse onto the membrane, releasing these vesicles. Now these vesicles containing the acetylcholine, which are your neurotransmitter for skeletal contraction, the acetylcholine binds onto these sodium ligand operated nicotinic receptors. And, these, and, and this causes these to open, and therefore you get an influx of sodium and therefore making the resting potential on the sarcolemma more positive, and this causes a propagation of the action potential on the sarcolemma. And if you remember from here, if you look at the muscle video, and this is, this is the diagram from there, you remember that the action potential comes down the sarcolemma, down to the T-tubules, and it causes calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum where you have a repository of calcium and then the calcium uh, binds onto your troponin C, causes the conformational change, moves the tropomycin out of the way and then allows your myosin to bind onto your myosin binding site on the actin and all of that causes the muscle contraction. So it's all linked. So back to this uh, diagram. So, so that's, that's what happens normally. Now, after the acetylcholine binds on to uh, these receptors, after a while, they are released again into the, um, into the neuromuscular junction or your uh, synaptic cleft. And this, in turn, is broken down by acetylcholinesterase into choline and acetate, and then the choline is then recycled into the um, the, the neuromuscular bulb uh, with the help of acetyl-CoA. 
So you get a constant cycle of your neurotransmitter uh, once this happens. So there are a couple more things to mention, and um, it's, it's a favourite of examiners to ask what drugs actually occur at the neuromuscular junction. And, um, and this is where it becomes more clinically relevant. So first of all, we talk about neuromuscular blockade. So these are your muscle relaxants. And largely speaking, the anaesthetists use uh, two types of muscle relaxants. Firstly, you have your non-depolarizing muscle relaxants, such as your atracurium, atra for short, or your depolarizing muscle relaxants, and this is your succimethonium. And so we, we'll, we'll talk about the atracurium first, your non-depolarizing. So the atracurium actually works on your sarcolemma at these sodium ligand operated nicotinic receptors. So what it does is that it competitively inhibits and binds onto these receptors, preventing your normal endogenous acetylcholine to bind on, to open these channels. Once the atracurium binds on, it doesn't depolarize the sarcolemma, it just sits there, uh, therefore paralyzing the muscle. So that's how atracurium works. However, succimethonium, it works slightly differently because this is a depolarizing neuromuscular uh, blockade. And what happens is that it's similarly, it binds onto these receptors. However, it does cause an initial depolarization phase where you get an initial muscle contraction or muscle fasciculation. However, because um, the succimethonium takes much, much longer to degrade, it then desensitizes and just sits in these, um, in these, uh, in these receptors, preventing binding of your normal acetylcholine. Uh, so that's called the desensitization phase, uh, when you desensitize the whole uh, sarcolemma. It's only in the desensitization phases where you get uh, the full paralysis of the muscle when using succimethonium. The next drug to talk about is Botox. And uh, the examiner may ask, well, well, how does Botox work? So Botox works by um, uh, inhibiting the SNAP25 protein. And the SNAP25 protein is really important in the production of these acetylcholine vesicles. And it also prevents them migrating onto the presynaptic membrane. So Botox actually works on the presynaptic uh, neuromuscular bulb. It's not postsynaptic. Although this, um, this particular process is permanent, so once it actually affects this particular vesicle or this particular vesicle, this vesicle will, will never work again. However, the effects on the patient is, um, is temporary because... Uh, it, it only lasts about you know three three or four months because once these vesicles are knocked out, you still have more acetylcholine and more um, vesicles in production from the motor cell, which is much much more proximal, and it takes um, a lot of time for these neurotransmitters, which are produced by the motor cell more proximately, to actually arrive at the neuromuscular junction, uh, and and that's why. Um, the, the effects of Botox, although permanent here, the effects are temporary because it takes more time for those motor cells to produce these vesicles of acetylcholine to arrive at the neuromuscular junction.